Hi guys, it's Stock Curry, and in today's video, we're going to talk about why the cryptocurrency market crashed over the weekend, why the stock market is crashing. We're going to talk about how long it's going to last, my prediction for this week, and what you can do to protect your portfolio. So let's get into it! Okay, first of all, I know we have a lot of new subscribers, so I want to let you know how the channel works. We're going to go over the market update first, then we're going to get into the stock picks. Now, if you look down below, you're going to see chapters. There are chapters available for each of the market updates, as well as each of the stock picks and each of the stock and cryptocurrencies we're going to talk about. So if you're only interested in one section or this or that, you can just use the chapters to skip straight to the section that you are most interested in. All right, let's get into the market update first. But before we do, I just want to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Webull. Webull is a great trading platform. I love Webull because honestly, they are by far the easiest trading platform to use on a cell phone. They have by far the best cell phone trading app out there, period. They also have what I believe to be one of the best desktop trading apps as well. And the other thing that I love, love, love about Webull is that they make the multi-leg options trading extremely easy. You literally just select whatever uh, option strategy you want to use. You, you pick your strike prices, you can make a little adjustments, and then you click buy or sell, and that's it, you're done. It is so incredibly simple. Most brokers, you have to hand select each individual leg of that option to build the strategy. Not with Webull. You literally just select your strategy, select whatever strike prices you want, and it builds it automatically for you. And they have an incredible graph, shows you your profit loss. I mean, it is so easy to use. And so that's why I love Webull. That's why today's video is sponsored by Webull. And if you want to take advantage of promotion they're running right now, you can get two free stocks worth up to $2,300 for opening an account. You deposit just $1 and you'll get your two free stocks. And the other thing is, if you do any cryptocurrency transactions for at least $5, you're going to get another $5 in free cryptocurrency. So it's an incredible offer they're running right now. If you want to take advantage of that, I have a link for Webull down in the description of this video. Just go look in the description below. You can sign up using my link and you can get the two free stops worth $2,300 just for opening an account and depositing just $1. All right, let's get into the market update first. And the first thing we'll talk about is the cryptocurrency crash that occurred on Saturday. Uh, really occurred late Friday night, early Saturday morning, depending upon where you live in the world. And man, it was a major crash. We saw cryptocurrencies drop over 20% in a matter of minutes. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen a flash crash in cryptocurrencies. This actually occurs fairly frequently, sadly. And usually it has some sort of catalyst that then gets exasperated due to market margin and leverage. Keep in mind that in the cryptocurrency world, the leverage can go as high as 100x, meaning you could put $1,000 into your account and you could trade $100,000 worth of cryptocurrency. So the problem is if you get a 1% drop in the price of cryptocurrency, you've literally just wiped out your entire account. And that's part of the problem is that as soon as you get a little bit of a drop, you start getting selling pressure. And as the price starts to drop more and more, you get more and more and more selling. And it just, it's a snowball effect. It just really rapidly builds upon itself. And when the, within a very short period of time, you have a lot of margin calls and a lot of selling in cryptocurrencies. So what was the trigger? What started all of this? Well, it all started with a hack, unfortunately. Hackers are said to have taken anywhere from $150 million to $200 million worth of crypto from an exchange called BitMart. Now, BitMart is a pretty big exchange, so this was kind of a big deal. BitMart confirmed the hack in an official statement late Saturday night, calling it a large-scale security breach. Although if you read BitMart's official statement, they said it was kind of a small breach, meaning that there was one Bitcoin wallet and one Ethereum wallet that some hackers broke into, stole cryptocurrency from, and then almost immediately sold that cryptocurrency on the open market. That, of course, is what triggered the sell-off, exasperated by margin, and what has caused this whole thing to drop by a good 20%. Now, all of that said, just keep in mind that cryptocurrency typically trades along with the stock market, meaning that when we get a crash in the stock market, like we're getting right now, you'll typically see a crash in cryptocurrencies as well. So it's not that unsurprising that cryptocurrencies are dropping. However, this flash crash was a little bit unexpected, a little bit too much, and that's why we saw cryptocurrencies rebound as fast as they did. 
Longer term though, over the next couple of weeks, I personally think we're going to see cryptocurrency continue to drop a little bit more, possibly as much as you know, another 10, 20, 30% from here before it bottoms out and starts going back up again. And that is just going to correspond with the stock market and the correction that we're going through right now in the stock market. Last week, all three major averages finished the week in the red. The Dow Jones registered their fourth straight consecutive week in the red for the first time since September of 2020. Now, what is important about September 2020? That is the last time the Dow Jones had a correction. A correction is a drop in the stock market of 10% or more. And the last time that happened with either the Dow Jones or the S&P was back in September of 2020. Now, to be clear, we're about halfway to a correction already. The Dow Jones is already down about 5%, the S&P is down about 4%, and the NASDAQ is down about 6%. So we're about halfway to that 10% threshold of an official correction. And it is well overdue. We haven't had a correction since September of last year. It's been almost 12, 13 months. And normally, on average, the stock market sees a correction three times a year. So the fact that we haven't had any this year is really shocking. We are way overdue for a correction. Now we can also see here how small caps were hit especially hard with the Russell 2000 falling 3.86% for the week. And later in the video when we get to the individual stock picks, I'll tell you how you can actually profit off of this and invest in the Russell 2000 by yourself and really catch that rebound on the way back up. Now on a little side note here, Bank of America came out and said that they expect 2022 to be a flat year for the S&P. Keep in mind that Morgan Stanley had previously come out and said they expect the markets to be negative 6% in 2022. Long story short, everybody's expecting a bear market in 2022. And uh, we'll get into a little bit more about what that means in Q1 of 2022. Uh, for now, just understand that even if the major indices are down 6% next year, that doesn't mean that they're just gonna slowly drop by half a percent every month. In fact, I believe Q1 is gonna be green with the indices rising, and then we'll see a further correction or market crash or bear market later in the year. Uh, so we have a little bit of time left on that but I do see the markets continuing to drop for the next two weeks. And the reason I see the markets continuing to drop for the next two weeks, bottoming out in the third week or the last week of December, and then going back up in January is twofold. First of all, we have the debt limit that is coming up on December 17th. Now, for those of you who are not US residents, you're not understanding how the debt limit works, it's a lot like a credit card. So you go out, you have a credit card, you start raking up credit, you start putting things on that credit card, and what happens is sooner or later, you're gonna run out of money. You're gonna hit the max limit on that credit card. And once you do, if you wanna keep building up debt, you're gonna to have to call your credit card company and ask them to raise the limit on your credit card. And that is the exact same way it works here in the United States. Our treasury is the one that actually pays the bills and they build up a bunch of debt because right now our US budget says that we can spend more than we actually make. And so the treasury department ends up running into a whole bunch of debt. Well, they have a maximum amount of debt that they can get into. And once they max that out, they have to go to Congress and ask Congress to raise their debt limit. And the treasury is gonna run out of money. They're gonna hit the maximum debt limit on December 17th. Now, if Congress does not raise the debt limit on or before December 17th, then the Treasury is gonna be unable to pay its bills and social security checks, uh, interest payments on uh, treasuries, all kinds of things are not gonna get paid. And that could be really, really bad. The last time we even came close to this happening, Standard & Poor's downgraded the US credit rating and we saw an almost immediate market crash in the stock market. So it is really, really bad if we get even too close to the debt limit. So this actually happened back in September of this year and we got right up to the point and then what happened was Republicans were unwilling to help Democrats raise the debt limit. They said, no Democrats, you're in control of the country, you go do it on your own. And Democrats said, we can't do it on our own because it takes a minimum of five weeks for us to pass a bill in order to get the debt limit raised. And Republicans said, too bad. 
and we were this close to literally running out of money and being unable to pay our bills. And on the very last minute, literally two days before the debt limit was reached, Republicans came out and said, okay, fine, we'll help you. We'll extend the debt limit until December 17th. And that's what happened. That's how we got to the date where we're at right now. And so the problem is, it, we have to see what Republicans are going to do. If Republicans are completely unwilling to help, we could run into another one of these situations where the country runs out of money because the Democrats have already said it takes them five weeks to pass a bill, and unfortunately, they only have two weeks left. And so this could really be a big problem. Now, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Republicans are going to step up to the plate again, and they're going to help Democrats out again, and they're going to extend this thing once again. Uh, but I think that's probably going to happen right at the very, very last second, like a day or two before December 17th. And what that's going to cause is two weeks of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which means I think we're going to see the market continue to drop for the next two weeks. And so that's my two-week time horizon. Now, to kind of go along with that and exasperate that, especially on the small caps, which if you've been investing in this market since January, February, you know that small caps got crushed in March and they've never recovered. And the problem is, uh, as we see the small caps continue to decline, a lot of investors are doing what's called tax loss harvesting, meaning they're selling their losing assets in order to offset their gains. So they might be selling their small cap uh, losses in order to offset some of their larger cap gains in stocks like Tesla and Amazon and Apple. And so what that's causing is more downward pressure on these small caps, which in turn is causing more selling pressure on the market overall, uh, which could cause the overall indices to continue to drop. And so that will continue through the end of December, which is just being tacked on to the whole debt limit and all of it together is causing a continued downward pressure on the stock market. So I think we're going to see the stock market drop for the next two weeks and then maybe trade flat or slightly up in the last week of December. And then come January, all of that's resolved. The debt limit is resolved. The uh, tax loss harvesting is resolved. Uh, all of this stuff is resolved. So I think come January, we're going to see a big, big green month in January. But we got to get through December 1st. So all of that said, that is my market prediction. That's what's going on. That's why it's happening. As we know, cryptocurrencies typically trade in line with the stock market, at least lately they have been. So if the stock market does continue to correct for the next two weeks, I do think cryptocurrencies are going to continue to go down as well. So I think we'll see a drop there. Okay, I want to thank you for sticking around for the market update portion of this video. Now we're going to get into the stock picks. Now for those of you guys who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I used to work as an analyst for some large investment banks and now I analyze stock picks on YouTube. Every day I spend hours and hours and hours watching YouTube videos and then I consolidate all of the stock picks from the top YouTubers and I put them together into a single video. I give you both the cliff notes from their stock picks as well as my analysis from their stock picks. Now if anything I talk about today piques your interest, make sure you listen to who I say talked about that stock and then go watch their video to get the full details on what they said. Now all I ask for putting all of this together for you guys is that you hit that like button, subscribe, and follow the page so that you can get notified when I release my next video. In fact, I'll give you five seconds to do that right now. All right, before we get into our stock and crypto picks, I do want to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I talk about today is a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold. These are just my opinions, which may or may not be accurate. Please do your own research before investing in any assets. If you're wondering what you're looking at right now, this is the Webull desktop app. Webull is the app that I use for my trading, and it is also the app that I use in all of my videos. All right, let's get into today's stock and crypto picks. All right, let's start with cryptocurrencies, and we'll start with Bitcoin. Larry Jones bought more BTC during the flash crash. He believes BTC will be worth $1 million within 10 years, and he took the opportunity to buy BTC at a discount. And ZipTrader let us know that the president of El Salvador took the opportunity to buy the dip on BTC as well. Now, technically, BTC looks like it wants to continue to fall. BTC has two strong support levels, one at 46,600 and another at 41,600. Now it's hard to say how low BTC will fall before it bottoms out, but I personally believe it's going to get back down to that $41,600 level before turning around and going back up again. And next up is ENJ. This is Engine Coin. It's a cryptocurrency that powers the Engine platform. Engine is a smart contract platform that gives game developers the tools for implementing and managing virtual goods. You might remember Borat Trades talking about ENJ during the live stream I did with him last month. Well, now Stock Mode decided to buy ENJ. 
Stockmo said he was waiting for a drop, and after this most recent flash crash, Stockmo opened a position on ENJ. He believes ENJ might be part of the metaverse in the future. And next up is SAND. This is the sandbox. SAND is the cryptocurrency that powers the sandbox virtual world. It is built on the Ethereum blockchain. Stockmo has been buying SAND because he believes it will be part of the metaverse in the future. And the last cryptocurrency we're going to talk about is SHIB. This is Shiba Inu. SHIB got down to the 100 day EMA just like I thought it would. Now the question is, should you buy in now or should you wait for it to stop falling? Well, that's up to you. I will tell you that technically SHIB remains bearish. The only sign of bottoming out is the fact that it is currently at the 100 day EMA. It's possible that SHIB will bounce from here and start going back up again. It's also possible that SHIB will continue falling and will drop down to the 200 day EMA at around four zeros and a two five. Now what's interesting about the 200 day EMA and that four zeros and a two five price is that that is the level where SHIB was trading at before its most recent run up. So that is another technical level of support. I personally think SHIB will continue dropping down to the 200 day EMA before bottoming out, but I could be wrong. Now, longer term, Keenan Grace reminded us that SHIB is working on a gaming platform that will bring SHIB into the metaverse. Once that is released in a year or two, that will cause an increase in the burn rate of Shiba Inu tokens. Okay, now on to our stock picks, and first I just want to do some technical analysis on the major indices. We'll start with the SPY, which is an S&P 500 ETF. We can see that SPY looks like it continues to drop. It is bearish on the RSI, it is bearish on the MACD, and the candles continue to drop as well. We also had a crossover of the 10-day and 21-day EMAs, which is a very bearish indicator. So all signs point to the S&P 500 continuing to drop. Now, taking a look at the Dow Jones, we see a very similar chart that we saw on the S&P, only it's a little bit worse. And in fact, we have the Dow Jones continuing to drop for four straight weeks now, which it has not done since its last time it corrected back in September of 2020. Now, the NASDAQ looks similar, although it looks like it's in a much earlier stage than the S&P and the D Dow Jones. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, it's only been dropping for about two weeks here. So it has a lot further to drop than the S&P and the Dow Jones do. However, if you look at the percentage wise, the S&P is down 4%, the Dow Jones is down 5%, and the NASDAQ represented here by the QQQ ETF is down 6%. So percentage wise, even though the NASDAQ has only been dropping for about two weeks versus the Dow that's been dropping for four weeks, in those two weeks, the NASDAQ has actually dropped further than the Dow Jones did. So the NASDAQ got a late start, but it is certainly making it up with a much faster drop. Okay, now on to the individual stock picks, and we'll start with GS. This is Goldman Sachs. Stockmo continues to like GS as well as other banking stocks. GS has one of the lowest PE ratios among the banking stocks, and it closed Friday with a forward PE ratio of only 6.41. Like I said before, banking stocks should perform well during times of rising interest rates because the money they make from a loan should increase. And high inflation will lead to higher interest rates as the Fed acts to curb inflation. Technically, GS continues dropping and has not shown any confirmation of rebounding yet. So I would wait two weeks for the market correction to finish before buying in. And next up is NIO. This is NIO, and they're a Chinese EV manufacturer. Stockmo agreed with Larry Jones and myself and said he does not think NIO will get delisted. He said he thinks NIO will rebound from here because it is oversold in the RSI. Now, NIO is oversold in the RSI, and it did hit a support level on Friday. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it will rebound right away. The RSI is only at 30, and stocks can often drop down to 10 on the RSI before rebounding. Further, NIO might trade sideways for a while before rebounding. There are some technical indicators pointing to NIO rebounding here, but we don't have any confirmation at all of a rebound. So if you buy in here, it is still risky. However, I do believe it is much less risky than it was on Friday, since NIO has already dropped so much now. I would be comfortable with two different plays on NIO at this point. One would be to buy shares, because I do think NIO is cheap enough now to where it would make for a good short-term trade. Another would be to sell either cash-secured puts or a bullish put spread. 
If you go the option route, I would go for about two to three months out because it is still very uncertain what NIL will do for the rest of this month. Now, all of that said, the traveling trader had a very different take on NIO. The traveling trader said that because the VIE structure is illegal in China, that he thinks China might force NIO to delist, even if they are meeting all of the regulations in the United States. So the traveling trader still sees all Chinese stocks as too risky to invest in. And he's not wrong. I would not buy NIO for a long-term hold. My thoughts on buying shares or selling puts here is purely a short-term technical trade. And my belief that Chinese stocks are still too risky to invest in stands. And the last stock we're going to talk about today is URTY. This is a three times leveraged Russell 2000 ETF. The Russell 2000 is a collection of 2000 companies, so it includes a lot more small caps than the major indices. Stockmo likes URTY because he believes the Russell 2000 is trading at a very low level and he does not think it will continue to collapse. Other YouTubers have said the same, as they pointed out how small caps are trading at fair valuations right now, while mid and large caps are trading at high valuations. Anybody who's been investing in high growth stocks since February knows how beat down small caps are right now. So I like this play, although I would wait two weeks for the market correction to finish. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. Comment down below what you think the market's going to do for the rest of December. And if you're looking for a broker to trade with, you can sign up for Webull using my link in the description below. When you sign up for Webull using my link in the description below and deposit just $1, Webull's going to send you two free stocks worth up to $2,300. And if you do one cryptocurrency transaction, they're also going to give you $5 in free cryptocurrency. Now, if you're not a U.S. resident or if you're looking to trade OTC penny stocks or if you just don't like payment for order flow, then I recommend Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is a great trading platform. They have highly discounted trading throughout the world. Trades start at just one US dollar, one Canadian dollar, four euros, or six Australian dollars, depending upon where you live. And both Webull and Interactive Brokers both offer the full pre-market and after hours trading from 4 a.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern time. Now, I want to remind you, if you haven't done it already, to please hit that like button subscribe, and follow the page. I hope you have a lot of success trading, and I will see you tomorrow.